means temporary. Sat means eternal. So, so the non-eternal is the temporary things, which means material things. And thirst or desire for material things is an anartha or a whole category or class of anarthas. We should not have uh, desire for material things. Material things come automatically by our karma or by our qualification. So there's no need to desire them because what we desire and what we get are two different things. <laughs> what we desire is what we may imagine. Huh? But what we actually get is the results of our karma. And that's going to come automatically. Whether we work or we don't work, we're still going to get the result of our karma. And the results of our work are what we're going to get in our next life, karma. So try to understand. There's, there's no way, really, that you can go out and say, OK, uh, I want this. And then by working, you may get it. But that's actually illusion. That's, that's not what's really happening. What's really happening is you were supposed to get that thing because of your past karma, for your activities in your previous life. And so uh, you did a little work in this life uh, just to convince yourself that, OK, you can, you can deserve it now. And then so you accepted the manifestation of your karma from the previous life. Meanwhile, you did all this work, and so you created more karma that goes to create your next life. And that's how most people are going from life to life to life. You know, just like a, a worm on a plant. You ever see those worms? They sit on the, they sit on the branch or, or a leaf or something, and then they look around until they find another leaf, and then they transfer one end to that leaf, and then they move the other end over to the new leaf, huh? like a plant worm. That's how, we, that's how we create our, our life, our next life. Huh? We're sitting, we're fixed in this lifetime. But by our, ne our work, we're creating the next lifetime. Huh? The results that we get in this lifetime are not exactly due to our activities in this life, but due to our activities in the previous life. And similarly, the results that we get in the next life are due to our activities in this life. So don't be confused. What you get in this life is not due to the work you're doing now. It's due to the work you already did in your previous life. And the work you're doing now is preparing your next life. So if you want to live in the spiritual world in your next life, you have to do spiritual activities now. Not at the end of your life, not maybe next lifetime, or whatever. You have to do it now. And if you do instead, if you keep asat trishna, if you keep taste or thirst for material things, if you desire material things, well, you may get them. But in the process, you're going to create another material birth in your next life. So be very careful to avoid this class of anarthas. The next class is called aparad. Aparad means offenses. And there, of course, there are 10 offenses against the holy name. But there are also other different offenses in deity worship and offenses to the Vaishnavas, which were discussed in the Nectar of Devotion. Uh, offenses to be avoided, that chapter. I forget the, cha the number of the chapter exactly. Uh, but offenses are very dangerous because by offenses, we lose our taste for spiritual life. Uh, our intelligence becomes covered over and we gradually fall back into material activities. Because it's so gradual, sometimes it's hard to notice. Like somebody will be engaged in spiritual life uh, and they uh, are, appear to be making some advancement. And then they get to a certain point and they get overconfident and they make some offense, usually against another devotee. And then because of that, they gradually lose enthusiasm and gradually they fall down back into material activities. So you sometimes see this. There'll be somebody 
who is like a, a big officer in a temple or something like this. But, you, you know, if you look at his day, you know, he maybe goes in the temple in the morning, chants a, a few rounds, and then the rest of the day is all business. Huh? Money, 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 business, business, politics, politics. What is this? He, because of offenses, he has gradually fallen back into materialistic mentality only in the context of religion, which is very dangerous. Okay? There's a story about this from the Shastra. Uh, one time, a big Brahmana, uh, like a temple, we would call him a temple president today. Uh, he's the, the master of a, of a temple. He was walking along the path and there was a dog sleeping in the path. Huh? So you know how dogs are. They find a nice warm spot and then they just lay out, <laughs> conk out. <laughs> you know, dogs sleep anywhere and everywhere. So the Brahmana became very angry and kicked the dog out of it. Get out of my way. Huh? So the dog said, uh, oh, this is, this is very bad. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this to Lord uh, Rama. This was in Ayodhya, in Lord Rama's kingdom. So uh, the dog went to the court of Lord Rama and he accused the Brahmana of mistreating him. And so, of course, the Brahmana was summoned to the court and he admitted, yes, I kicked the dog. I mean, you know, it probably wasn't right, you know. And uh, so then the Lord Rama asked the dog, well, what do you think his punishment should be? And the dog said, um, make him, make him the head priest of such and such temple. And Lord Rama said, "Well, that doesn't seem like a punishment. That seems like, a, like an, a reward." And the dog said, "Oh yeah, well, in my last life, I was the head of that temple." <laughs> And because I got puffed up and I made offenses to the devotees, now I'm a dog. Now I'm a dog. So you make him the head of that temple and he'll fall down. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so you see, this is the, the, the danger of uh, taking some uh, big post or big power, you know, in a very opulent spiritual society that one can again become engaged in material activities. I mean, we know a lot of our God brothers got like this. They got into the whole money thing and the whole competition for disciples and all of that. And uh, pretty soon they're like, you know, jet setting all over the world and going to nice, you know, going to GBC <laughs> meetings in resorts, uh, at big hotels, and spending a lot of money, and uh, you know, like, what's the point? Huh? Building big, big temples with million dollar budgets, and like this, and oh, geez, $500,000 disappeared into my personal bank account. How did that happen? <laughs> and then they spend it on traveling and opulence. What is this? This is, this is asat trishna. This is precisely the thirst for material things. Uh, so be very careful of this anartha. And finally, hridaya um, daurbalya. Hridaya means of the heart. And daurbalya means weakness. Bal means strength. Balya means someone who's strong. Huh? But dur means difficult or hard. So this, this could be translated either weakness of heart or hardness of heart. Either way, it has the same effect. If one's heart becomes hard, then what's the question of love? Huh? What's the question? You cannot love if our heart is heart is made of stone, huh? stone-hearted, hard-hearted. It's not possible to love. Uh, little children can love easily because their heart's still soft. Uh, they haven't had so many bad experiences in life. And so they naturally tend to love. Uh, but then when people grow up and they become cynical 
Uh, maybe they have some bad experiences in life and their heart becomes hard. And so they don't trust easily. Uh, they, they're not affectionate. Uh, you know, they become hard-hearted. Well, a hard-hearted person can't really uh, engage in devotional service because, how, you know, if you can't love Krishna, who can you love? <laughs> Krishna is the most lovable, most attractive, cutest, most affectionate, most loving, most merciful person. Uh, if you can't love Krishna, then uh, you forget it. <laughs> but the thing is, love doesn't, doesn't turn on and off like a faucet, you know. So uh, if you can't love in people around you in this material world, then how are you going to love Krishna? Huh? That when we go in the temple, then all of a sudden we turn it on and, oh, I love you. And then we come out of the temple and turn it off. And then, you know, where's my money? <laughs> 